It's been eight years since I started to be a digital nomad and I have lived and worked remotely in dozens of countries in Europe, Asia and America and in this video I will tell you how I made it happen. If you are new on the channel, I'm Julian and in the blogs I teach Web3 development. And before we start, quick announcement, I run a bootcamp to help Web2 developers get into Web3. This is a part-time six-month program where we teach you everything you need to know to become a professional Web3 developer so that you can get your dream job in crypto. Most of these jobs are remote and well-paid, which is ideal if you want to become a digital nomad. If you want to apply to the bootcamp, check out the link down below. All right, so this is how I became a digital nomad. It all started just after I finished college. At that time, I was living in Paris, in France, and even though Paris is a great city, I was so curious about the world and I really wanted to live abroad. But it was too early for digital nomads. Nobody was doing that. So my initial plan was just to go to another country and live there for a few years and see if I like it. I didn't know anybody who could help me, but I had a brilliant idea. So I figured out that maybe I could reach out to the alumni network of my college. So I searched the database of alumni of my college and I called some of them who were living abroad. It was completely random. I didn't know any of them and I was really nervous. And against all odds, one of them answered me and he was in Hong Kong. We ended up talking for two hours and at the end of the call, he offered me my first job abroad, just like that. This one phone call completely changed my life. Fast forward a few months when I arrived in Hong Kong, I started my job right away. I was in the finance industry and it was really intense. It was really like in the movie The Wolf of Wall Street with supercharged traders walking back and forth on the trading floor and shouting on the phone and being super obnoxious. It was fun but it was exhausting. And beside work, I was going out a lot on weekends. At that time, the nightlife of Hong Kong was amazing. It was great for people like me in the early 20s. So my life was pretty much work hard, play hard. And when I didn't wake up too late on Sundays, I would either go to the beach or hiking in the mountains of Hong Kong. So Hong Kong was a really great experience. But after three years of this, I realized that finance wasn't for me. So I left Hong Kong and I moved to Taiwan to take a break from work. And I took Chinese classes and I took some time to discover the local culture. I met a few people, including someone who was a digital nomad. And I fell in love with the concept. The idea of going from country to country and working online was just fascinating to me. I had to find a way to do the same thing. So I did some research and I found that there was one occupation that was best suited for that. Software developer. The problem was that I didn't know much about coding and at that time one of my roommates connected me with someone who needed a WordPress website. So I took the job even though I knew nothing about WordPress or PHP. It took me months of work to make it work and at the end I didn't make much money but I was so happy because it was the first time of my life where I worked online and I thought that if I could have more clients like this I could become a digital nomad. And I started to run in-person meetups on WordPress and that's how I was able to meet other customers. And at some point, I started to work full-time for one of these customers. I was working for this e-commerce website and part of my salary depended on the sales. So I was making between $3,000 to $5,000 a month. And with this money, I could finally try out the digital nomad lifestyle. So I went to a few other countries like Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam, and life was great, but good things always come to an end and disaster struck. After two years of this, I lost my job and I was back to square one. And I started to realize that I needed to make more money and that I needed something more sustainable. So now I had enough experience with freelance, so maybe I could try to get a full-time remote job. So I applied to many positions, but I was rejected from everywhere. They wanted someone more senior. I only applied to generic web development job, but I thought that if I could be more specialized, it would be easier to get a remote job. And this is when I fell in love with crypto. So I connected the dot right away. I realized that crypto was an up and coming niche with only a few developers. And if I could be one of the first crypto experts, I would find a job easily. And I was right because three months after I started to learn Web3 development, for the first time of my life, I found a full-time remote job. I was working as a Web3 developer and I was making $100,000 per year. That was the dream. 
Finally, I was making enough money to fully experience the digital nomad lifestyle. So I really took advantage of my freedom. I went to many countries and because I was making more money, I could afford better accommodation, go to better restaurant and enjoy life more. So I went to London, I went to Seattle, went to Tokyo, Osaka, and I haven't stopped this lifestyle since then. This year I went to Barcelona, now I'm in Paris, and next I will go to some other countries in Europe. So what did I learn from all my adventures? When you go abroad, you not only learn about other countries and cultures, but surprisingly you also learn about your own culture. It's like when you go to the museum, if you are too close from a painting, you cannot see the full picture. But when you take a step back, you understand the meaning of the painting. And ultimately, being a digital nomad helps you to know yourself better as well because you are exposed to many different environments, you can observe how you react and you learn a lot. Now I have to warn you against something really important. Being a digital nomad also has some downsides. If you keep hopping from country to country, you will be exhausted. It's tiring physically but also mentally because you always have to make new friends, meet new people and you constantly have to anticipate your next trip before your tourist visa expires. That's why I prefer to have a home base where I stay at least six months during the year and for the other six months I travel. This way you can have your main circle of friends, you can have a chance to rest and you can also have your fun time. Now to be a little bit more practical, here are other useful things I learned. In order to combine work and leisure when you go abroad, you have to be disciplined. In a week time I have my regular working hours and I don't deviate from that. I keep all the visiting and all the tourist stuffs for the weekend. You also need to make sure that you will have a place where you can work. It can be either the place where you live, but in this case you need to make sure that you have a good desk, a good chair and a good internet. Now the possibility is to rent a desk at a co-working space, but it's an extra expense. And when I want some change, I go to coffee shop, but I don't like to depend on them 100% because internet in coffee shops is never as reliable as an internet at home or at an office. And for meeting people and making friends, I like to use meetup.com and sometimes I also organize my travel plans according to conferences. In 2019, I went to the Truffle Conference in Seattle. This year, I will go to ETHCC in Paris. And another important thing when you're a digital nomad is to stay healthy. So I always make sure to eat healthy and go to the gym. Basically, I try to keep good habits. Being a digital nomad is different from being on holidays. So how can you become a digital nomad? You have to reverse engineer the problem. To become a digital nomad, you need a job that you can do online and that pays well because being a digital nomad is an expensive lifestyle. Software development is one of the best solutions and most specifically Web3 development because first, this is the niche where you will find the highest proportion of remote first companies and two, Web3 pays better than other software development niche. And the fastest way to get a job in Web3 is to get some help. At Eat the Blocks, we run a bootcamp to help Web2 developers get into Web3. This is a part-time six months program where we teach everything you need to know to become a professional Web3 developer so that you can get your first job in Web3. Most of these jobs are remote and well-paid, which is ideal if you want to become a digital nomad. If you want to apply for the bootcamp, check out the link down below. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.